Hi, Sean here, and welcome to this skill where we're going to be moving on to take a look at how to build simple GUIs in Python. Now, so far, pretty much all of the Python programs that we've built have interacted with us through the console, right? And when you're first learning Python, or if you're really comfortable just more in the terminal, like many developers are, this is just fine. However, at some point, you're usually going to want to design your Python program in such a way that pretty much anyone, even people who have never really worked with any kind of programming languages before, can still, uh, you know, run and use and interact with it. So what we're going to take a look at in this section is we're going to take a look at the basics of the TK Inter uh, module, which contains a lot of the basic code, right? A lot of the basic utilities in Python for creating these graphical user interfaces and displaying them, manipulating them, etc. All right, so first of all, let's just get this out of the way here because I don't want to have to say three different words every time I want to talk about this module. Uh, the module's name is written like this, and I'm not even going to say it until I write it all out. Now, you may have a preference for how to uh, pronounce this, but I'm going to pronounce it from here on out as TK Inter because, um, according to the module itself, this stands for TK interface. And if you're wondering what the TK stands for, it stands for toolkit, right? So if you want to think of this uh, from here on out as TK enter, right? Like that. That's how I'm going to say it from now on. Now, it's entirely possible that you work on a development team that uses this module quite a bit, and they might pronounce it T Kinter or T Kinter, or I have no idea. And um, that's just fine. Just know that from here on out, I'm going to pronounce it TK Inter. That's the last I'm going to mention this. So anyway, let's move on now. And um, what we're going to do first is take a look at the basics of just getting a TK Inter program up and running. So let's start off here and we'll just call this file TK Inter Basics.py. And inside here, what we're going to do, uh, first of all, I guess let's just discuss this module in a little bit more detail. TK Inter, uh, the basic way that it works is by displaying things inside a window. So the first thing that we have to do is create a window that we can actually insert things into. And these things, as we'll see uh, very shortly, are called widgets, right? And widgets in TK Inter are basically anything that gets displayed in that window. So things like buttons, things like text, things like uh, text inputs, those are all going to be widgets. And um, well, in order to actually display them, as I said, you're gonna need to have a window to put them into. So let's take a look at the uh, basics of displaying a window in TK Inter and after we've done that, we'll actually take a look at the different kinds of widgets we can work with and really get into building some applications with this really wonderful module. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is, since this is an external module, we're going to need to um, import it. So we'll need to say from TK Inter import, and then we're really going to have to import pretty much whatever we want, unless, of course, you just want to import the entire TK Inter package and say TK Inter dot blah, blah, blah for pretty much everything you want to build. I've personally found that it's a little bit nicer if you just say from TK Inter import and then just write whatever you want to import from this module. Uh, so anyway, the first thing that we're going to take a look at here is, as I said, how to create a window. And the main thing that we need to import for that is this thing called capital T lowercase k. All right, now this uh, TK thing that we just imported is a class that we can use to create the main window for our application. Now, by convention, usually what this looks like is we call it root, and then we just say equals TK and put parentheses after it to create an instance, right? So what this does, as I said, is this creates the main window, and from there we can basically use this root thing to uh, start our application, to add things into the window itself, and also to uh, stop our application programmatically if need be. So now that we've created our main window, the next thing that we're gonna want to do is set the title for our window, right? So basically along the top of the window, in case you haven't noticed this, you probably have, but just to make sure, um, along the top of the window, there's gonna be a bar and Basically, we get to put whatever text we want into there to help users know 
what the uh, what that window is actually for. So the way that we set this with this uh, root thing that we just created, right, the main window, is by saying root dot title, and then this is actually a method that we can call that will allow us to set the title along the top bar of our window. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set this to something like my first TK enter application. And then I'm going to put an exclamation point because we are excited. So now that we've set the title of our window, the last thing that we have to do is call a method with a somewhat strange name, and that is root dot main loop. Now what this does is it starts the main event loop of our main window. And basically what that loop is in charge of is doing things like uh, handling events, right? So if a user does something like clicks a button or enters something into a text box, the main loop is going to take care of that. And it also takes care of doing things like redrawing the user interface. If something changes, let's say that we've um, loaded data from, uh, from a server and we want to display that, then the main loop is going to take care of doing that as well. We'll go into more detail on this a little bit later, but that's the basic gist of it. And uh, on a more obvious level, I suppose, the main loop also prevents our program from ending, right? So uh, unlike with a regular Python script where we just run the script and then when it reaches the last line of code, it's done. Uh, when you're working with a graphical user interface or GUI application, as I'm going to call it from now on, um, you know, you really have to keep that running until the user explicitly closes the window or until we close it programmatically, which is something that I'll show you uh, how to do a little bit later on as well. So anyway, that's really all that we need to create a basic TK inter application. So the next thing that we're going to do is run our app and we can do that here by running uh, running our file just like a regular Python program. We're going to say Python 3 tk enter basics.py and if we hit enter it's going to look like it hangs up here but if we go back over to our desktop what you'll see is that you have this adorable little window with the title up at the top saying my first tk enter application um so again this is the main window and this is really the basis of everything that we're going to be doing from here on out with tk enter because really this just provides our application with a place to put all of its widgets and it kind of guarantees that that's going to interact nicely with whatever operating system uh, your program is running on so it gives it a nice little um you know gives it a nice little space to work with and that's the basics of creating and uh, displaying your first tk enter window so Two more things that I want to talk about here before we move on and actually start taking a look at the TK Enter widgets. The first thing is you may have noticed that the uh, the window started off pretty small when we first opened it up. Um, and actually, let's close our window. And what you'll see is if we hit X, that will actually end our application. So if you go back, you'll see that the application is no longer running. And well, just to show you what I mean, let's try running our program again. And sure enough, our, uh, our little application is back to its normal, rather inconveniently small size. So if we want to change that, here's how we do that. Basically, what we do is we have to use this root object that we created and we call another method on it. And that is root dot geometry. Now, this is another uh, somewhat interestingly named method, and basically what it allows us to do is set the dimensions that we want for our window. Now, the easiest way to do this is just to pass a string with those dimensions to it. So if we wanted our application to be, let's say, um, 800 by 500, and that is width by height, well, if we enter that in and stop our program, I'll just go back and hit X on that window, and run our program again, what we'll see is that our application is now more of a normal size. So really, you can decide in your code how big you want this window to be initially. And keep in mind that users can always maximize your window if they want to, right? So I've just hit maximize and you can see that uh, that's basically made it take up the entire screen. So if we minimize this again, it'll go back to normal. And users can always resize it like this as well. Now, there are ways to prevent them from doing that if you really want to. But, it, you know, it's generally considered to be better uh, a better user experience if they can make the window the size that they want. So this is all going to factor into how you end up designing and displaying your applications. So the last thing that I want to show you here is how to programmatically close uh, your application. So what this is going to look like, and... Um, 
For reasons that we'll describe a little bit later on, you can't just call this willy-nilly and expect it to work. But uh, what you need to do instead is, let's just use the example of having our application close automatically after, well, let's say, two seconds, all right? Well, the method for this is root.destroy. But again, because of reasons that we'll discuss in more detail later on, calling this um, in the following manner, right? If we were to just say something like uh, time.sleep for two seconds and then say root.destroy, this actually wouldn't work, partly because I misspelled it. There we go. Uh, but this still wouldn't work, right? Root.destroy. So what we have to actually do is we have to tell tkinter, right, our root uh, object here, that we want it to schedule something to happen in two seconds. So here's what this looks like. We're going to say above root.mainloop, by the way. That's also very important. You can't do this afterward. Root.after. And then it's going to ask us for the number of milliseconds that we want to wait. So that's going to be 2,000 milliseconds, two seconds that is. And then we need to pass the function that we want it to call once that time expires. So we're going to say root.destroy and just pass that as an argument without any parentheses or arguments or anything after it. And again, this will tell our uh, TK inter application that after 2000 milliseconds, right? After two seconds of the application running, it should destroy the application. And when we call root.main loop, that actually starts this uh, timer ticking, so to speak. So if we run our program now, just like, uh, again, just like we run a regular Python program, what you're going to see is after two seconds, the application will automatically exit. So that root.destroy method with some caveats um, is generally how you will programmatically close your application, right? If something goes wrong or, um, you know, if the user has uh, pressed a special quit button that you made yourself in the interface, you're going to want to call root.destroy in order to make that happen. So anyway, those are the basics of creating and displaying a TK inter application. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.